once powerful note. Right now, you're on the threshold of an amazing adventure. If Square won, they wouldn't have got eaten by the competition. One. After that terrible One. movie, they had no other choice. Two. Wow! What does that mean? He is all that remains of a once powerful Yoda. It means he doesn't want to get involved in another pointless right argument. Now, like on this one. Amazing adventure, Yoda. We shouldn't listen to anything Maki says. She's just going to throw out more lies. But if we don't ask her for more details, how will we know for sure? I told you already, we don't need to. I hate liars. Liar, liar, pants on fire. More one to talk. Bobby, just ignore that lying little degenerate. We'll listen to what you have to say. It must have been a little after midnight last night. He visited me at my research lab. He wanted me to show him the motive video that I received. Motive video? If Ryoma came to ask about that, does that mean you had his motive video? As I recall, Ryoma had Maki's motive video, correct? Does this mean you and Ryoma received one another's motive video? Maybe. I actually didn't check them when I got, so I wouldn't know. Maki admitted earlier that she hadn't checked her cubs pet. Then why did Ryoma think that Maki had his motive video? He went around asking at random. He might have asked some people besides Maki. He never asked me. He probably never asked you guys either, right? Then, who was it that told Ryoma about his Cubs pad? Super careless. Aren't you scared someone might kill you in your sleep? And then what happened? I don't know what happened after that. I'm not even sure if he saw his motive video. When he asked me, 
He said that he would show me my motor video in return. But I wasn't interested, so I declined. And that's pretty much it. So you don't even know if Ryoma saw his motor video? Maki met with Ryoma at night time. That proves he was still alive then. Which means, even though we don't have alibis from 8 to 10, Maki and me aren't suspects. If that story is true. It's true. Then why did you wait until now to bring that up? say anything until now because I wasn't in the mood to be suspected. Suspected? What for? Kizumi said it earlier. It seems that Ryoma and I had each other's motive videos. Well, it's pretty fishy, right? So I didn't want to mention it to avoid suspicion. You didn't say anything because you weren't in the mood? It is quite selfish to keep this information hidden because you were not in the mood. Well, whatever. Either way, let's just believe my... Yes, yes! Those who believe shall be saved! No, we need to wait. There is still more to confirm. Well then, why don't we ask Kokichi? Huh? What now? You never answered my question. Were you the one who told Ryoma that Maki had his motive video? Is that really important? Yes, it is important. Because if Kokichi told Ryoma, it becomes more likely that Ryoma visited Maki during nighttime. I see. Kokichi's response may help corroborate Maki's testimony. Now you understand why I don't want your charade. I want the truth. Well, Kokichi, did you tell Ryoma? You said it earlier. I don't want to die, right? If you really don't want to die, then you better tell us the truth. Here comes the dramatic turnabout. Now I'm the one pressured by Maki. Okay, it's true. I told Ryoma. Just as I thought. That's not a bad thing, right? He wanted to know, so I told him. Have you seen everyone's motive video? No, not yet. I was going to wait until we hosted, like, a movie screening party. I just checked who had whose, so I could give them back to everyone after. Mm, I see. Anyway, if Kokichi told Ryoma that, then he must have gone to see Maki. That means Maki's telling the truth. Ryoma was alive during nighttime. No, we 
cannot be too sure about that yet. Even if Ryoma and Maki did meet, it does not mean it was during nighttime yesterday. So you still suspect me? I am saying it could still be a possibility. If there is still a small chance of you being the culprit, then I cannot trust you entirely. Because everyone's lives are at stake. Just by looking at her? Maki's testimony suspicious. It's far too convenient for her. This is difficult to determine. Maki is lying. Like I said before, a liar like me knows their own kind. I'm not lying. I did meet up with Ryoma during night time. I'm telling the truth. Testimony, I'm afraid. As expected, Maki is lying to us. If you can't prove your claim, then it's the same as an outright lie! I met with Brianna the previous night. At night? Yes, I didn't meet with anyone else. Did anyone see those two together? I was wrong! I met with Ryoma the previous night. What a load of crap! You only see Ryoma at night? Yes, I didn't meet with anyone else. Did anyone see those two together? Surely they would have come forward already. If no one can prove... <laughs> I always was the truth! I might not be 
able to prove they met, but I can prove Maki wasn't alone. Oh, please explain. Well, Kaito and I train together every night. And yesterday, because of the insect meet and greet, we started late. Huh? Ah, Kaito, don't worry. You don't have to say anything. Anyway, we were doing some frog squats on the school stairs. When we heard two people talking, We knew one of them was Maki, but we couldn't pick out the other one. But now that I think about it, it must have been Ryoma. What? Uh, yeah, maybe. That was probably around midnight. and Maki did meet up. No, no, hold up! Why'd you sit on that info for so long? Because until just now, I didn't think it was relevant. I have no reason to bring it up. Now, now. We don't know if Maki was really talking to Ryoma, right? Is true. If I knew for certain, I would have said so sooner. But considering the circumstances, I can't imagine it being anyone but Ryoma. None of us were talking to Maki last night, correct? So it must have been him. And nobody say you suddenly remember talking to Maki. It's way too late for that. If I overheard a conversation in the middle of the night, I surely would have checked. We are still part of a killing game after all. Whoa, whoa chill out! Why the scary face? That was my bad, but it's not really manly to eavesdrop, you know? I wouldn't do something so uncool. Anyway, I know that we heard those voices. Maki is not lying. Then Gonta will believe, friends. You're gonna believe him? Just like that? Yes. If his lie leads us to the wrong culprit, he will join us in eternal sleep. Unless he wishes for death, we should be able to believe him. That's right. You can believe me. Yeah, you're right. I'll believe him too. Belief shall set you free! I'd be so surprised if Shuichi was a liar. Especially after we believed him for so long. We wouldn't be able to trust anyone anymore. Well, it's not like he's lying anyway. Alright, that proves it then. Ryoma was still alive during nighttime. In other words, me and Maki aren't suspects anymore. Right. I guess that means everyone's alibis no longer matter, yes? So, 
everyone is culprit again? However, it should be clear now that the crime occurred after nighttime began. But then when was Ryoma's body placed inside the piranha tank? Well, the gym is locked at nighttime, so it must have been the next morning. But... That's not possible. Himiko and I were at the gym, remember? into the piranha tank? I don't think so. We have evidence to prove that's what happened. And when did the culprit throw the body into the piranha tank? time they could have done it was during nighttime, huh? Did you forget the gym's not open at nighttime, Dick Cheese? Dick Cheese? But that's the only possibility, because by morning we were already at the gym. It may be possible they slipped by without you noticing. Slip by me, I'm known far and wide as the snoozing sorceress. What a terrible title for a Thor! Are you positive that you did not see it? You cannot enter the gym at night. Disobey school rules, right? The body was probably moved in the morning. Calm down, everyone. Go to sure if we discuss disagreement. I see through your arguments. Disagreement? What? A disagreement? You mean you're split down the middle again? Then the ultimate academy is to present its very own more phenomenal trial grounds! Yippee! We've been waiting for this! Jeez, you gotta do that whole crazy thing again? Enter the gym at night. Lucky. 
Entering the pullet makes what's off limits, not the pool area itself. The piranha tank is too far from the gym's entrance. I got this! You might be able to reach the tank from the window above the stage. But the pool next to gym also off limits. I got this! Entering the pullet makes what's off limits, not the pool area itself. But should we trust Maki's testimony in the first place? Let's go! It's okay, because we have Shuichi's testimony too! Remember, the rules say that you can't enter the gym at night. Did the culprit move the body just before the morning announced barricade? I was in front of the gym with the others, before the announcement. This is not possible. You simply missed the culprit. Here we go! You were right in front of the door. There's no way you could have missed it. Remember, the rules say that you can't enter the gym at night. Kaito! Rules probably don't apply to corpses, you know. The piranha tank is too far from the gym's entrance. I got this! You might be able to reach the tank from the window above the stage. But pool next to gym all squat. Entering the pool at night's what's off limits, not the pool area itself. But should we trust Maki's testimony in the pool? It's okay, because we have Shuichi's testimony too! Move the body. That window is higher than the piranha tank. Pretty close by. Curtains might have been closed, but the window was open. The whole investigation. That means it was certainly possible to put the body in the piranha tank from the window. However. I'm also positive the pain dividing the piranha tank was set up beforehand. That certainly couldn't be tossed in. It would need to be placed carefully. Even if the culprit were to throw the body from outside the window... The window is far too high. It cannot be reached from the floor. Ryoma is small. Gonta could have chucked him easy. Yes, but Gonta wouldn't do that. Gentlemen not chuck dead bodies. Being a gentleman has nothing to do with it. I know. They used the ladder in the gym. You tested it out while you were investigating, Shuichi. That ladder reached the window, right? So the culprit just needed to put the body through the window to pull it off, right? the ladder reached the window was because it was on the stage. If you use the ladder on the pool side, it would not quite make it. The ladder could barely reach the window when it was on the stage. nothing on the pool side of the gym as tall as the stage. 
Finally, the ladder was found in the gym, correct? If the culprit used the ladder on the pool side, we wouldn't have found it in the gym. And they couldn't have thrown the ladder back through the window because it's too heavy. Then Gonta used his hard strength to throw the ladder or the body or something. Gentlemen, not throw dead bodies or ladders. The body could not have been thrown into the piranha tank to begin with. It would need to be placed carefully to prevent the glass pane from shifting. Got it, Musclehead? Even if we injected tons of steroids into you, it'd be impossible! Sorry, you're right. You didn't need to apologize, Gonta. How the culprit moved the body from the window. Ha! <laughs> you guys don't even know that? What a bunch of dimwits. Do you have the answer then? But of course. Tell him, Shuichi. Blow him all away with the truth. Uh, I, uh, actually don't know that yet. What? The culprit definitely moved the body through the window, but I don't know how. Seriously? Serves you right! You just made a fool out of yourself after acting all high and mighty! Thieves just need to shut up and take their licks. What are we gonna do, Shuichi? We gotta figure this out or we're done for. Hey, you gotta do something, Shuichi! I know. I have to do something, but... I don't think it really matters how the body got into the piranha tank. Gonta thinks it matter. We won't know culprit's trick unless we figure out. We're getting sidetracked. It doesn't matter how it was done, just who did it. We shouldn't focus on where we found the body. Instead, we need to focus on where he was killed. Where he was killed? Wouldn't it be more efficient if we focused on the murder scene instead? Yes, that's it. We were so caught up in where the body was found. And we should have been thinking about where the murder occurred. Murder scene definitely have more clues about the culprit. Why didn't anyone realize this yet? <laughs> That's strange. steer the conversation away from that child. 
then culprit is someone in this room. Well then, let's discuss the crime scene to figure out who the culprit is. That's not a bad idea for a robot. The last time I heard such a good idea was... When Nino told me to move in with her under the bridge to get out of the pool. Thank you, Maki. That was a helpful insight. I can't believe you didn't notice that. I guess that's why you're still an apprentice. First, let's establish the crime scene. Wasn't it the dorm room? Ryoma was relaxing in his room when he got attacked. But the cause of death was drowning. There's nothing in his room that could collect enough water. He's got a toilet, doesn't he? Drowning toilets? Impossible! We should consider places where water is stored. The only place that fits is the pool. Even if you use magic, there's no other way! Well, it must be the pool then. Now that little turn drowned in the toilet. Shut your mouth, Mom. Sal. Ah! Sal! First, let's establish the crime scene. Wasn't it the dorm room? Ryoma was relaxing in his room when he got attacked. But the cause of death was drowning. There is nothing in his room that could collect enough water. He's got a toilet, doesn't he? No toilet? Impossible! We should consider places where water is stored. The only place that... That's wrong! could not have been the scene of the murder. Ryoma was killed at nighttime. No swimming is allowed at nighttime, so a living person could not have gone in. Yeah. A dead body is fine because it's just an object. But if a living person entered the pool... I think I might cry. of a once powerful yoga. Cry as loud as you want. I'll cry with you. We can right spend the now, night together you're crying. You're on the threshold of an amazing adventure, Shoka. In the morning after, I'll write goodbye on your mirror and lipstick Two. before I quietly leave. One. Only after you leave do I realize how much you really Two. mean to me. Remains of Quit being so gloomy. This is the year of the Jets. Fuck the Patriots. Anyway, we can conclude it's impossible for him to have drowned in the pool. Where was Ryoma killed if not pool? Is there other place where water can be stored? This is it! The sink in Ryoma's lab. There were distinct scratch marks on it. 
scratch marks on the sink? Then I believe those scratches were caused by... This is it! The handcuffs. They were scratched as well, correct? Well, yeah. Sort of looked like they'd been scraped against something. There's also the fact that the handcuffs were from Ryoma's lap. The marks in the sink came from the handcuffs in the same room. The size and shape of the scratches are consistent with the handcuffs, I'm sure. Hmm. How did those handcuffs get from the lab to the water tank? Because Leona was wearing them, right? Yes, though they were only visible for a brief moment when Leona appeared in the tank. I am certain he was wearing the handcuffs at the time. The handcuffs were left after the piranhas devoured Ryoma. So, the culprit handcuffed Ryoma and drowned him in his lab sink. Ryoma must have been pretty yummy. They chomped up his entire body. Arms, legs, brain... Ryoma. He could have used Shikuchi method to get away, unless someone ambushed him? It's possible they knocked him out before handcuffing him. <laughs> Though there's no way we can be sure of now that he's not the bone. I doubt he was ambushed. I'm pretty sure the culprit got Ryoma by. Ah, whoops. Don't pay attention to you, me. I'm just talking to myself. When you talk to yourself, pretend you're eating and chew with your mouth closed. Otherwise, you'll get a mouthful of peanut butter squid. It's so disgusting, you laugh! So we all agree Ryoma was drowned in the sink in his lap, right? That sink could have held enough water to do it for sure. All right, I'm calling it. The crime scene is Ryoma's fucking research lab. But how did the culprits carry his body to the gym from there? Isn't Ryoma's lab on the third floor of the academy? It's actually not far at all. Although, perhaps it's more accurate to say there's a shortcut. Was there a shortcut? The window? That's 
That's right. None of the windows in this school open. Except the one in Ryoma's lap. And on top of that, the window faced the pool. You could see the gym straight across. Did the culprit drop Ryoma's body into the pool area from the lab window? Then they could have thrown the body into the piranha tank through the gym window. Your explanation contradicts some things we discussed earlier. The gym window was too high to reach from the poolside, even if one used the ladder. That's right! I apologize! I must go on a journey to reflect on this! We keep hitting dead ends, since we don't know how the body was thrown into the gym. <laughs> well, that didn't really give us any info about the crime.
was moved directly from his lab to the gym. Directly? Don't tell me they threw the body from window to window. I mean, we're talking about a body. It's not like tossing a baseball, you know. No, I don't believe he was thrown. Perhaps another way. What do you mean another way? There's no other way to move it. The culprit must have used some kind of equipment. Huh? Equipment? With this equipment, they can connect the two windows and move the body to the gym. Knows the answer. So, 
During nighttime, someone used the rope, then threw it into the gym window? So they did use the rope! That's how they bridged the distance between both windows! Is the rope long enough to reach both windows? The rope is roughly 65 feet long. As for the distance between the windows... According to the sign of the pool, the width of the pool is roughly 35 feet. And the distance from the edges of the pool to the windows is an additional 16 feet. Altogether, the sum total length from one window to the other is roughly 50 feet. And pool is only pool between research lab and gym windows. You bet it's long enough! <laughs> That's what she said. Wait, who said that? Even if the rope was long enough, wouldn't it be pretty hard to tie them to the windows? Both windows were too high to reach. It would be like tying a rope from one cliff to another. If the windows were closer together, then they could toss the rope across. But they're not. No! Don't you think it would work? Just need one more rope! Impossible. Ollie. This is it! The tennis net cable from Ryoma's lab could serve as a rope. How long is it? About 50 feet or so. But how do they use it? Okay, so... First, culprit hang rope outside of one window. Then, culprit move to the other side. And tie cable to other window. Then, after tying to each window, culprit tie rope and cable together. That how culprit make one rope that reach both windows. Wow! That's amazing, Gonta! You're so knowledgeable! It's nothing. Gonta use ropes a lot when looking for bugs. Even if they did connect the windows with a rope, they can't carry a body on just that. Eureka! I got it! Thomas Edison once said that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. In my case, it's 100% inspiration! They can cut the body to the rope and slid it from one window to the other, like Tarzan! The body would reach the gym window, but it wouldn't land in the piranha tank. Stop making such dumbass comments and keep your smelly breath in your dirty mouth. Tarzan? Um, but they also had to put the body in the piranha tank after they moved it, huh? That is not feasible with just one rope. 
Maybe the rope wasn't the only equipment the culprit used. Well, anyway, it would have been pretty difficult to get that body in the piranha tank. He wouldn't just throw it. The trick was a super crucial part of the culprit's plan. The culprit must have carefully placed the body into the tank with their own hands. But is there really a way to do that? Kokichi, are you hinting at something? Huh? Hint? What hint? Don't confuse me with your talk of hinting hints. All right, Shuichi, the stage is finally set. What? Listen up. Do a good job here, and I'll be able to put an end to this trial. It all starts with you. You be the opening act, and I'll be the main event. And then together, we're gonna save everyone! Together? You got this! After all, you are my sidekick! I believe in you, so I'm gonna leave the rest to you. Yeah.
way to move the body. A rope way, huh? Are you sure about that? Wow, you got brain damage or something? You need some kind of vessel to use on a rope way, and we don't have that! rubber inner tube we found floating in the pool. on one side. Maybe the rope was originally tied on both sides. The culprit made a ropeway by hanging the tube from the rope connecting the windows. And because the third floor window is higher up, Gravity would have pushed the inner tube along. The inner tube is made of sturdy rubber as well. It could have supported two people.
culprit used the ropes in the inner tube to construct a rudimentary ropeway and used it to move themselves and Leoma's body from the lab to the gym. Once through the gym window, the culprit stood on the inner tube to move the body. Either that, or the culprit placed their foot on the window sill. That way would be more stable and let them handle the course more carefully. Finally, they removed the rope from the window frame and left the scene. that place their foot on the window sill. Isn't that against school rules? It would count as entering the gym, would it not? <laughs> Last time we got asked that question, we decided it was okay. Two. Sticking your body through the window Four. is an automatic out, but standing on the sill is... Two. Wait, who asked you last time? Eh? It is quite possible that the culprit went to you to confirm the details of their plan. No shit! You didn't put your foot in your mouth. All that remains of a once powerful What? Monosuke just unhinged his jaw and swallowed his right entire now, leg! You're on the threshold of an amazing adventure. You cut it out! I can't write this off as a joke if you two keep one. freaking out about it! Two. <laughs> then your little slip up is actually the truth! Pops? Oh, oh, Daddy's mad at you now. Uh, two. Oh, look at me. This is what you get for acting like a big shot all the time. Was just getting fun. Why you gotta ruin it with that slip up? But I guess now we know Shuichi's logic is right on the money. Does a revolver really use rope weight to move body? Yeah, they use the rope weight to move with the body from window to window. Rope weight murder. Some crazy ass shit! But if the mechanism was that complicated, wouldn't it be hard to put it all away? 
Not necessary. All one must do is detach the rope from the window after using the ropeway. Then, after returning to Yoma's lab, one could retrieve the rope from that side. Tossing the rope into the gym from the pool window would be the final step. I see, I see! The rope was thrown from the window! That's why we found it there! With that method, the culprit must have made numerous trips from Ryoma's lab to the pool. Which is why the crime was committed during nighttime, while we all slumbered. But if the culprit was so careful to recover the rope they used to commit the crime, why did they leave the inner tube in the pool? I believe that was an accident. Yes. When the culprit was taking down the inner tube, he accidentally dropped it. Then why did the culprit leave it in the pool? This took place at nighttime. I see. They couldn't get the inner tube because swimming is prohibited at nighttime. But couldn't they have used the rope to fish it out? Not necessarily. You see, the water level in that pool is so low. Even if one tried to draw in the inner tube using the rope, The steep angle the rope would be at would make it nigh impossible. It's different if they used a pole, but there's no way a rope would work. Even if inner tube was closer to pool edge, water's still too low to drag tube in. drops an inner tube and can't retrieve it. Let me tell you, this culprit's a real fucking amateur. No, actually. Save for that one mistake. This was the perfect crime. If Maki had never met up with Ryoma at nighttime, it might have been the end for us. I still don't know if Maki is telling the truth or not. Personally, I find this culprit frighteningly thorough. Such a bold, beautiful plan. I never even imagined there was a rope way. Oh, respect begins to bloom in my heart for this wonderfully cruel culprit. Respect a culprit. Now, we just need to figure out who the culprit is. Unravel this mystery otherwise. Uh, who is it? Hmm. Looks 
like it's time for me to start the main event. But my sidekick here is on a roll right now, so I'll let him take this one. Hmm? Ah, okay. You're just pushing everything onto Shuichi because you don't know yourself. Well, Shuichi, do you already know who the culprit is? Hey, Shuichi, are you hesitating again? Come on, man, there's no need for that. Like I said, you're my sidekick. I take responsibility for any mistakes my sidekick makes. So use those skills of yours I believe in to shove the truth down their throats. You believe in my detective skills? That's right! I'm gonna leave it all to you, Shuichi! It has to be you! There's one more thing I still have to confirm. But Kirumi is the prime suspect. Me? What? K Kirumi? Oh... So Kirumi is the culprit! That is not yet a certainty. Let us hear her testimony first. Is this true, Kirumi? I cannot believe you would suspect me. If that is the case, then I will have to deny it. I will not let you make the wrong choice. The wrong choice? If you do believe this, are you prepared to stand by that decision? I will refute your accusations with all my might, for everyone's sake. I, of course, am not the culprit. The crime was committed at night time. You have no honor, do you? An alibi for night time? I believe most of us do not have one. I have evidence that proves you're the culprit. Do you think you would fall for such nonsense? The trick relied on complex mechanisms to work. But someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. The costumes. That could have been done by anyone. Kirumi is thin and has a nice body. She and Ryoma could have totally shared an interview. We all could have, except perhaps don't. I, of course, am not the culprit. The crime was committed at nighttime. You don't have an do you? An alibi for nighttime? I believe most of us do not have one. I, I have evidence that proves you're the culprit. Do you think we would fall for such nonsense? The trick relied on complex mechanisms to work. But someone like you could be skilled enough to pull it off. Preposterous. That's wrong! The only 
person who could have prepared this murder is Kurumi. Well, the preparations in the gym in the case. And why do you believe that? Before the culprit could put the body into the tank, several steps needed to be taken. Like tying the rope to the gym window and putting a partition in the piranha tank. That's right. Ryoma's body entered the gym from the window. That required preparation. That could only have been done when Kirumi was by herself in the gym before nighttime. Kirumi was alone in the gym for only, like, five minutes. Not enough time for the whole murder, but enough time to set it up. Enough time to tie the rope on the window frame and put the pain in the piranha tank. This is my selfless devotion! While I do understand where you are coming from, I assure you, this is just a part of your petty imagination, an empty theory created from nihilism. <laughs> if it were solely the rope and partition, I suppose five minutes might be enough time. I accept that. However, the crux of your argument is not but a guess. You continue to force the best to conform to your misguided narrative. When you consider that the crux of your argument is faulty, your entire case falls apart. What do you mean by crux of the argument? How is it just a guess? I am referring to the road. Now, with that road, it is possible to reach the gym window from the third floor window, but there is no evidence to indicate this would happen. I'll cut through your words! I have evidence. The abrasions left on the window frames at the gym and the lab. Those scratches from when the rope was tied to the window frame? Just tying the rope to the frame wouldn't cause so much damage. The rope that was tied to the frames must have been weighed down significantly. The frames didn't break, but they were left with distinct marks. Those scratches are proof that you used a rope to carry the body to the windowsill. Oh? What's wrong, Kirumi? What's wrong? What's wrong? Hey, what's wrong? Hey, 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 hey! Is it really quiet because that's what happened? You answer us, Kirumi! Shuichi is doing this for your sake! If it is for my sake, then it would be much easier to forfeit. But I cannot allow that! Because I must do this for everyone! I have a duty and a responsibility. I must serve everyone and protect them. If I refuse to surrender, they won't forgive me if I do! Kirumi, who exactly is this everyone you're talking about? I've just got a weird feeling about this. 
When you said everyone, felt like you weren't talking about us. It felt like you were talking about someone who isn't here. Someone who isn't here? Someone outside of the Academy? Hey, do you think Kirumi saw her own motive video? Huh? The motive video? You saw your important someone in danger, so you committed murder, right? Sorry for making such a mess. Because of that, I made all of you assume something unnecessary. Unnecessary? You saying I'm wrong? This everyone you're talking about. It is all of you, of course. Really? Do you swear to a tour? Yes, really. So please believe me, I am not the culprit. I do not care what becomes of me, but I will not allow any of you to die. I made a promise to Kaede. She wished for all of us to escape together. she gained our trust that she saw her chance to strike. Sufficient proof. It is still possible for Maki and Kaito to have gone to the gym. They do not have alibis. They could have pretended to help Himiko, but secretly prepared the murder. When you put it that way, it does seem possible. We can't accuse Kirumi just based on our alibis. Maybe suspecting Kirumi is wrong. Yeah, maybe we 
should think it over one more time. I made a promise. As the ultimate detective, I made a promise to seek the truth. I made a promise to Kaede, so I'm not turning back now. to indicate that I am... No, there is. I have proof that you're the culprit. I realized it when you determined that the rope weight was used to move the body. If it was indeed Kirumi who moved the body with a makeshift rope weight, then the final clue falls into place. The final clue? The damning evidence that proves Kirumi is the culprit. Shuichi, won't you please tell me why you are so desperate to pin me as the culprit? Don't you want to protect everyone? I'm doing this because I want to protect everyone. Shuichi. Then you're wrong! Your deduction is all wrong! Your words aren't going to convince me now. Not when I know the truth. All you care about is your own reasoning. You don't even listen to others. I can't bet everyone's lives on a deduction made by a self-righteous brat. You can't save anyone! that proves you're guilty. It's been bothering me for a while. I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought it was just trash at first, but I couldn't dismiss it entirely. Now that the class trial has come this far, I know for certain It's an important piece of the puzzle. Because like the other two, it's evidence the culprit couldn't dispose of. could have used their hands for friction. Yeah, so what? You're still wrong! Your logic is flawed! Me, why are you becoming increasingly erratic? <laughs> there is such absolute beauty in trying to fight against the truth. is just trash. You can't prove I'm the culprit with just that. No, 
No, it's not just trash. It's proof that you're the culprit. Fabric came from Kirumi's black glove. <gasps> Kirumi's glove? If the culprit were slowing their descent by grabbing the rope with their hands, there would have been a lot of friction, easily enough to cause rope burn. But our culprit was smart. They weren't burned because they weren't barehanded. Yeah, the culprit had gloves on. One got all torn up from the friction and... Fell into pool? 
From what I remember, the only one who wears black gloves is Hiroon. Right? The gloves on your hands now. I take it they're from your room? The extra uniforms in our rooms are made of the same material we're wearing now. We can test my theory by comparing the fabric scrap with your glove. Well, Kirumi? Will you allow us to compare the black fabric we found in the pool with your gloves? So much. What's wrong? is the truth of the case. The victim's body was found this morning during Himiko's underwater escape act.
When we saw the piranhas in the tank, we thought that Himiko's escape failed. Of course, it was all part of the act. Himiko's escape went perfectly. But when Angie opened the curtain in front of the tank, we saw Ryoma with piranha swarming around him. Before any of us could react, the piranhas devoured Ryoma's body. And all that was left were his bones and the handcuffs he was wearing. That horrifying sight was the finishing touch on the culprit's own twisted magic trick. The culprit obfuscated the time and place of the murder, implicating Himiko in the process. In truth, the crime began last night, around 8.55 p.m. While preparing for the show in the gym, the culprit had a chance to be alone. It was then that the culprit used the ladder to reach the piranha tank. And removed the glass lid to put inside the tank. They used it as a partition to force the piranhas to one side of the tank. Next, the culprit took the rope from the stage wing in the gym. And used the ladder once more, this time to climb up to the gym's window. Once there, he opened the window and tied one end of the rope to the window frame. The rope was then thrown out the window toward the pool. These preparations were key for the culprit's elaborate plan. Nighttime, past midnight, the culprit asked Ryoma to meet at his lab. All the pieces were in place. The culprit was ready to murder. First, the culprit knocked Ryoma out probably striking him from behind. Then, they put the handcuffs from the shower room on Ryoma's wrists. And shoved his head into the sink filled with water. From the water and the pain of drowning, Ryoma should have woken up and struggled. The culprit anticipated his resistance, which is why Ryoma was handcuffed. The struggle left scrapes on the cuffs and sink, but in the end, Ryoma succumbed. Ryoma was dead, but the culprit's plan had only just begun. They removed the cable from the tennis net 
and hung it from the window facing the pool. And then, at the pool, they connected the wire and the rope from the gym window. They return to the lab after picking up one last thing. The rubber inner tube that was in the pool's tool shed. Once back in the lab, the culprit pulled the cable, bringing up the rope. Hold until the rope was taut, then tied it to the lab's window frame. And thus, the gym and the lab windows were connected by a single rope. After making a hanger of sorts with another length of rope tied to the inner tube, They hung the inner tube on the rope connecting the windows. That's how the culprit created the ropeway that was used to move the body. An impressive premeditated murder, but the culprit made two crucial mistakes. The culprit got on the inner tube with Ryoma's body and slid toward the gym. With the height difference between the windows, they would have built up quite some speed. To avoid crashing through the window, the culprit used a brake. They used their own hand to grip the rope and slow down. That would have caused significant rope burn had the culprit not been wearing gloves. But due to the friction, part of a glove tore off and dropped in the pool. Regardless, the culprit reached the window and put Rioma's body into the piranha tank. The glass pane not only kept the piranhas and the body separated, it also kept the piranhas so close together that they concealed the body. After that, all the culprit had to do was untie the rope and the inner tube. But that's when they made their second mistake. One end of the rope came loose, and the inner tube dropped into the pool. Thus, the culprit was forced to leave two key pieces of evidence, the fabric, and the inner tube. They couldn't retrieve the evidence because of the rule against swimming at nighttime. And that's the whole story. Am I wrong, Kirumi Tojo? The ultimate maid?
that's the conclusion I reached. Do you have any objections? This is very, very unfortunate, Shuichi. My pride as a maid demands that I fulfill every request that I receive. Why use your own gloves, though? The warehouse should have had plenty. There weren't any. Obviously, she would have used them if they were available. Monokuma provided everything but the gloves. That's pretty sadistic. But thanks to him, at least the game became way more interesting. Someone nobody expects. That is right. No need to worry. Hi, Monotone. You're like a mommy taking care of a sick child. Right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? 